remember an experience that you talked about, David, one time when uh, you were having some physical symptoms, and then you realized this is impossible. <laughs> so what I want to know is what got you from the experience of what was going on physically, and this is impossible. And you don't touch the okay. Yeah, that was that was a day in the life of the parable of David. Roll it back many, many years. But that was the day when David was doing the workbook of Course in Miracles, and David was on lesson 136. Sickness is a defense against the truth. Perfect day to have symptoms when your when your workbook lesson is sickness is a defense against the truth, and I the, the context of that was is that I came home. And I, as I was in the kitchen, I started to feel very, very nauseous. And um, I was contemplating having dinner, but I got more and more and more nauseous. That was the symptoms. And then I even had a, a plate of food reheating in the microwave. And I just started thinking how, as it got more and more intense, how I would not be able to eat that plate of food. And then the mind actually started searching for a cause of the symptoms which is like habit for a lot of us. You feel symptoms, you start, whether you're into metaphysics or not, you still start looking for a cause. And, and it was this really deep, nauseous feeling. It was like, oh, is it, is it the flu bug? Oh, and where did it come from? Oh, my grandmother had it, my aunt had it, it must have come from them. And, and you know, the typical things, and oh, is it the 24-hour bug or the 48, you know? And it probably common to what a lot of people would think. And then this, this very, very strong uh, diarrhea feeling hitting them. <laughs> and so it was a double whammy of nauseousness in the stomach and then the diarrhea. And then racing down the hallway uh, toward the bathroom and the toilet, and sitting down, getting them onto the toilet, and then that's when my, my lesson of the day came. Sickness is a defense against the truth. And what happened uh, is that that idea came from the Course and then related ideas that, that you make the choice for sickness when you're afraid of love mm. and you want to call on a witness to prove that you're frail and weak and little <coughs> and you're not in the magnitude of being a child of God and you're not in the magnitude of love. And so it's a trick. It's a trick in the mind with a quick forgetting. You know, you make the decision but you forget the decision and then you look at the symptoms and you think that the symptoms came from somewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. It could be anywhere in the world catching a, the flu or whatever, and, um, or something that you ate, food poisoning or whatever, too much time out in the sun, so on and so forth. So as I went deeper down, I did go into this experience that I know a lot of people, have, when they've gone in near-death experiences, uh, they go inside very, very deep. I went into this deep prayer and meditation, sitting there on the toilet, and <laughs> Uh, I was a captive audience for the spirit, <laughs> and literally driven there by my perception of sickness. And and I realized that everything that that I've been taught in the Bible and Sunday school and all these years of following Jesus and listening to Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, including the, the course that He was now teaching me, that it's all in your mind and there's nothing outside of you. I realized that it had to be so that that either Jesus was telling me the truth about all these things all these years, that I could rely on Him and trust in Him and follow Him, or the only other alternative would be that He was the biggest liar of all time, <laughs> and the biggest faker of all time. <laughs> and he was completely, you know, full of gibberish and nonsense. And so, as I sat there with this, these intense symptoms, it really came down to me going into the core of what my experience was with Jesus and the Christ. And if it was true that sickness was a decision and that I could change my mind, then everything that Jesus had ever taught me was true. And it would, this would be a demonstration. And if it was not, then I could just give up on the whole, the whole thing. <laughs> you know, the whole Jesus thing. And, and so I really could see that clearly it couldn't be both ways. It couldn't be that it was that way, both ways. It had to be one that I was choosing it or another that I was at the mercy of it. And so as I went inside, what it, what it broke me free of it was I just started to feel all this love that I have for Jesus 
inside, all this gratitude that's drawn me my whole life, welling up deep, deep inside of me. And that got stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, so much so that it was not any more just a stream of thoughts. It, I just went right into the immersion of, of this is either true or it's not, that I'm working, practicing, studying. And when I went fully into that, then, then all the symptoms vanished in, in just in an instant, just like they were completely gone. And that's when the words came, this is impossible. Kind of simultaneously with, with the thought, this is impossible. From, from inside that love, then everything disappeared. It was a very powerful experience because I couldn't chalk it up as, oh, another intellectual insight. This was a, a literally the release from a decision for pain and suffering in my mind. It was just going in deep enough and saying, you know, I'm going to have to go right to the root of this one. And it was very, very, it just propelled me in, in the rest of my journey to let go of the world, to let go of jobs, to let go of careers, to let go of nationalism and, and country, all types of pride, to, to let go of identification of being whatever, a speaker, a teacher, an author, to let go of all concepts of relationships, to let go of male and female, to let go of masculine and feminine, to let go of all types of the subtleties that seem to be a part of even spirituality that are really just more duality. They just aren't true. Point blank, they just are not true. And for me, my whole purpose was to to experience the present moment, to live in that moment, to be a living ex experience and demonstration of that moment. And so that was a beautiful experience that propelled me and it, it came just simply from dropping down into the love. And from that place of that deep love, that's that's where everything changed for the rest of my life. <laughs> Thank you.